What's up guys, welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you how to make your crappy looking buttons much more professional, aesthetically pleasing, and smooth. Let's get started. So, I've opened a new project and I've called it Button Tutorial. Um, as you can see, I've drawn a very bad button. Um, it is bad for several reasons. Number one, the spelling mistake, okay? This is not how you spell play, in case you don't know. Um, second is that the color contrast isn't very good. For example, uh, if you put um, black and gray together, you're not going to be able to see the black very clearly, right? Similarly, if you look at the text, um, it's a bit hard to see um, the color differences. It's important that your button um, has a very clear color contrast between the button background and your actual text. Um, so let's get uh, let's get a new costume here, and I, I'm going to make it much I'm gonna make a much better button good button great so first I'm gonna start off by drawing a rectangle um, yay and um, I'm gonna snap it to the middle and then I'm going to write some text now um, I'm gonna make my text white because it's a good color that stands out from um, you know colors that are uh, darker so I'm going to drag my saturation down a bit and make uh, the brightness higher Yay. So, let's make a play button. Play. And uh, by the way, um, I find the Japanese and uh, Chinese fonts pretty nice. So we're going to use the Japanese font in this uh, for this button. Uh, as you can see, the button background is a bit large, so I'm just going to size it down a bit. That's a optimal uh, size. Yeah, it's fine. And let me make my text, move my text down a bit. Yeah. Great, so now we've already um, gotten a significant improvement from this to this, right? Um, well, there's a, another step that we can do, and it is to round the corners. You don't have to do it, but it's a pretty nice touch. So, um, select this um, point tool, <laughs> click um, on the corners, well, beside the corners, two twice, and then click on the uh, corner vertice and press delete. Yay, it's gone now. And you can see we have a smooth curve here. So let me just do it for the other three. Um, you can choose how um, big the curve is. So, oops. If you place your uh, dot here and here, then the curve is going to be much more large, right? And you want the curve to be consistent. So I'm just going to uh, move it closer a bit so they all seem the same. Oh, that's a bit too much. Yeah, uh, I'm just wing I'm just winging it right now, <laughs> um, for the sake of the tutorial. Yay! So now, if you zoom in, you can see that it's curved, which adds a nice little touch. Great! So now we've learned how to make a uh, good-looking button, and I'm just gonna delete this right now because we don't need it anymore. Um, I've prepared three buttons. Um, these are buttons made by a professional called uh, Kenny. Um, he's a art maker. Um, and right now we're going to do a little bit of code to make the uh, buttons actually do something when our mouse pointer touches it, right? Okay, so as you can see, the uh, loudspeaker button kind of gets larger as we touch it, and it gets smaller when we don't touch it. Um, you can see here is the code. Um, it's very simple. Uh, we're just saying that when the button is touching the mouse pointer, we're going to change our size by... We're going to repeat 10 and change our size by 1, right? And when it's not touching the mouse pointer, it's going to repeat 10, change size by negative 1. So it's back to um, 100. Well, uh, there are several flaws, flaws in this design. Number one is that um, it's not very smooth, as you can see. Um, it literally has a constant uh, speed when it gets larger and smaller. And um, secondly, I feel like um, it could... Uh, be a bit more, you know, it could have some color contrast. Like, usually if you touch a button, it might get brighter or something. So that's what we're going to implement in our second button. So, we're going to do when clicked forever. If touching our mouse pointer, then we are going to change our size by 110 minus our size 
divided by uh, whatever value you want. Let's say 5. Now, uh, this is a smoothing algorithm. I've talked about it in some of my other videos. Basically, it calculates the distance um, between our expected value and um, the current value. So I want the button to have a size of 110, and it's currently 100, right? So 110 minus 100 is 10, right? And then that's going to be a dis that's going to be our distance. And then we're dividing the distance by a value, so it's kind of going it's kind of going to uh, smooth into that size. I, mean, I don't know how to describe it, but um, also we want the uh, you know the button to stay at a size of 100 when we're not touching the mouse pointer, right? So I'm just going to put this in here. Now look at that. Um, as you can see, there is kinda, it kind of has a drifting uh, mechanism now. It kind of slowly smooths in and smooths out. Um, there's a bit of lag because I'm recording it on my laptop. Um, as you can see, uh, there is barely any difference, but if I make my... If I make my uh, size larger, let's say 125, you can see that it's really smooth now. Okay, uh, it's seriously lagging now, so let me just delete the other tabs. Oh, not this one. <laughs> Wait, so you can see that there's an obvious difference between this button and uh, this button, right? Because this one actually, you know smooths into that size and we're probably going to make it um, a bit brighter when we're touching it right so we can go here we can find the effects block select the uh, brightness effect so when we're not touching the mouse pointer it's going to have a brightness effect of zero but when it is we're going to have a brightness effect of five yeah look at that it kind of gets a little bit brighter when we touch it right oh now this is already really great um the final thing i would like to add into our button is to make it kind of move up and down when we're not touching it, right? So let me just drag the script into our button 3. So, uh, button 3 behaves similarly. Oh, whoops. So you can see now button 2 and button 3 are uh, the same, right? Um, and we kind of want the button to move up and down a bit. And an easy way to do that is to say set our Y to sign of our timer now sign is a tr trigonometry function um you don't need to know what it is yet because uh i don't know what it is actually um it's some sort of um value calculated when you divide um a length by another length of a triangle um but all you need to know is that it creates a wave um when you graph it out and this wave is what makes it really smooth so if we say set y to sign the timer times 300, let's times that by 5, so I can show you what it actually does. You can see that, oop, I haven't clicked the green flag. You can see that it kind of moves up and down smoothly, right? Um, this is um, all because of the sine wave, right? Um, I really like this because um, it is um, it kind of animates the buttons, which is really nice. Um, I, usually, I usually have this at uh, 2 or 3. Because you don't want the buttons to be moving too much. Like if I said 20, then obviously that would be way too much for a button, right? You want it to kind of be subtle. Yay, so um, as you can see, these are the three stages of a button. Number one, the uh, regular button, which kind of gets, you know, uh, larger and smaller. The second one kind of gets brighter and smooths into its size. And the third one, uh, you know, actually has an idle movement. So uh, that's all I wanted to talk about in this tutorial. I know uh, the quality wasn't um, that good compared to my other videos. Um, but uh, it's been a long time since I made uh, a YouTube video. So um, I hope you learned something from this. Um, try to make your buttons much more professional. And stay tuned for more Scratch tutorials.